I want to welcome all of you who are here in person and watching YouTube and Facebook and to the Worship and Union Center United Methodist Church where we love God and praise God through loving each other. So wherever you are, I'm so glad that you are here to be with us and to join in our worship service this morning. So now, let us prepare our heart and mind with an opening prayer together. Lord, we come seeking your face. We long to feel your presence and to know you care about us. Our heart rise and enjoy and praise to you as we remember all the ways you have walked in our lives. You are our courage, sustainer, savior, and friends. We desire nothing more than to honor you in our worship this morning. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war may break out against me, even then I will be confident. Amen.
amen, I have goosebumps. <laughs> While we're all standing, may we say together, our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, this is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven. Testament um, reading this morning is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there will be no divisions among you, and that you'll be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. And another, I follow Christ. Was Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of the Stenitis. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to pre preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Let us sit back and listen to some special music, Be Still and Known. <laughs>
Now let's turn to our joys and concerns, any prayer requests that we may have. Okay, who's going first? Oh, oh please don't let me have you call on me for something to say. Come on. Here we go. Donna Glover, would you like to say something? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord and to be able to worship him and to have my family, most of my family here with me. It's really precious, and I just praise him and thank him for, for all he does for us. Amen. See, that wasn't hard. <laughs> Shannon. This week, my son and I share a birthday, and we're going to turn one year older on Thursday. <laughs> Me, much older than him. <laughs> You're a week ahead of yourself. You have a whole nother week. Oh, yes, it's not a One more, hang on. So Shannon, you had Michael sweating up in the balconies looking at me saying, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, I knew it was two weeks out. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's such a blessing. We continue to be blessed. We were accepted by Chow this week uh, to also receive food for our pantry. The blessing of chow is it's a random mix of food, but it's all free. Um, and so, and often that we can get fresh things, um, which is always something that, you know, is harder to get for a pantry. So we just continue to be blessed. Uh, we continue to have people from the community come and share their, their stories at times with us and, um, it's just, it's just such a blessing. I wish each and every one of you could, could be there, but I know you can't because <laughs> you're busy and you work and do all kinds of different things. But please know we're making a real impact in our community, and it's just a real blessing to be able to, to, be able to spread that word out. So. Fun to get together. It's fun. We're having a good time with it. So there's actually sign-up sheets in the Narthex, hint, hint. And um, <laughs> we're always looking for help. Any prayer requests? <clears throat> I have a couple. Linda Fannin Schmidt from our sister church called yesterday, and she's very, very sick, some sort of stomach issues that she's having. And... <clears throat> So we're asking prayers for Linda and her son, Michael. Um, he's a truck driver. He's been uh, down with the flu and for four days, and he's supposed to go out tonight on a run, but she doesn't know if that'll be able to. There's many unspoken requests that we have. There's always unspoken requests. <clears throat> Al and Hannah Smith are not well today, so they're not with us, so let's keep them in our prayers. And I'll bring your attention over to the, oh, do we have somebody? Oh, see, I got her started. <laughs> I've had two granddaughters that have been healing, and they're both doing well. <clears throat> so I have to praise the Lord. They've been on the prayer list, and I'm so thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ray has something to say? <laughs> <laughs> 
Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we have a busy week coming up. On Tuesday is the um, the food bank truck will be coming with a delivery. I believe we have over 2,000 pounds of food coming. Always can use help unloading the trucks and restocking shelves and such. Um, if you're interested in, in helping out, please see Sheila, and she'd be glad to talk with you. Super Bowl Sunday is coming up on Super Bowl Day. After last night's game, Rod is crying, but that's okay. <laughs> He'll get over. So there's another sign-up sheet, of course. <laughs> no, the Giants lost. So. <laughs> the Giants lost. Um, there's a sign-up sheet in the Narthex. Uh, if you're interested in making a soup to share or some desserts, we always need help with setting up and cleaning up so that we can uh, do this together as a fellowship. And again, our indoor pantry is every Thursday from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. <clears throat> and um, there's a lot, a lot going on. So um, if you're interested in helping, let us know or sign up. Go ahead, Dave. You know, you say, come on out and work at the food pantry. <laughs> Believe me, it's not work. <laughs> we have a ball. Uh, the people are so, so funny, and uh, we just have a wonderful time. And I also want to say there was a miracle yesterday. Syracuse men's basketball game won. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other scores we need to be aware of? Patricia? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any of you have ever went to Rudin's Old Farm Days. Well, I didn't even know it until I saw it in the penny saver here this last week that their house and barn and stuff burnt last year and they have got the house rebuilt and are actually having a fundraiser for them with the VFW in Owego today, 1 to 5 o'clock there's a chicken biscuit dinner and stuff so I will be attending I don't know if anybody else has <laughs> got the time but <laughs> anyway Thank you Patricia And one more time I need to bring your attention to the news in the bulletin about the upcoming vote that will be held January 30th here at the church. We ask that you be here around 6 o'clock. Voting will be at 6.30. So please be here around 6 so that you're not late because there's <clears throat> formality things that we have to do and we would hate anybody not to be able to vote because they were late. Okay, if you didn't get a letter explaining all the monies that are owed or about the two-thirds vote or whatever you're cons you know, confused about, I can get you another letter. Please let me know if you need another letter. Or if you want to talk to anybody, the administrative board is always available to talk to you. Okay, any other prayer requests? or? Okay, let's bow our heads and... Close our eyes and we'll have a moment of silent prayer and then I'll pray and then we can all pray the Lord's Prayer together. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Father. Even though the sun's not shining, we know that your sun shines. And for that, we're grateful. We're grateful for this beautiful church that you've enabled us to have and to keep. And we're grateful for a wonderful pastor and family that you've sent to us, Father. And for that, again, we're grateful. Father, you've heard some of our prayer requests. We have members that are, are sick and not able to attend today. Father, I ask that you put your arms around them and oh, 
give them that peace. Give them that assurance that you are there for them and that you will guide them through these illnesses, Father. Father, we know that there's many unspoken requests. I think that we each have one. Sometimes, Father, things are deep, deep down. And they're, sometimes they're dark. And sometimes we just can't bring them out of our mouths to share with others, Father. But you know what those prayer requests are. You know our heart and you know our mind, Father. And, and for that, we are grateful. Father, we're um, so grateful for new babies that are coming into families and for um, new families forming, for um, just people that have had babies and that they're healing, Father, so that um, they can be brought up and uh, loved and nurtured, Father, in, in your way. Father, we're thankful for um, all the activities that are going on for our church, Father. Thank you for blessing us that we can um, bless our neighbors, Father, to, to bring them into our church, to um, show them what we can do to help them. We thank you, Father. So with that, Father, I'm... Uh, asking everybody to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will you stand with me as we sing, I am a soldier of the cross. Be seated. Thank you. We're going to share a message today. comes from the Psalm chapter 27, verse 1 through 5. I read it for you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Through an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. 
through war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Amen. Would you pray? Oh my God, take my lips and speak through them. Take our mind and heart thinking through them. Take our heart, set them on the Holy Spirit with the love for yourself. May the waters of my mouth and the meditation of the, my heart be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my rock and redeemer forevermore. Amen. I was so funny, I turned in. <laughs> okay, curries. <laughs> For some reason, I'm particularly afraid of two things. The first thing is all creatures that can look at me sideways, like a turkey. I would say turkey is when I went to my grandmother's house. I don't know if its taste might be good, but was scared, afraid. Especially the beak was enough to remind me of an alien in some ways. Right? One day, it became a reality that a turkey out of the cage was chasing me. It was absolutely terrifying. I mean, that creature made me freak out in a moment and step back into a wall and I'm crying. I would never forget the moment where the turkey slowly and turned his head and looked at me with one eye. It was like a dinosaur looked at his prey in the movie Jurassic Park. Oh, it was just a feeling of something like that. And since then, I have started to be scary of that kind of like creatures, even just when I heard the name, you know, like a turkey. Ooh, scary. Everybody's please tell me about it. Turkey? Everybody tell me about that turkey? Turkey? Ooh, scary. And I do it again, turkey, ooh, scary. <laughs> but I actually was shocked to find out here in the United States, people eat turkeys without a blink, even deliciously. So, who should I fear more? It is turkey or all of you? <laughs> Another one, ah. It is something that jumps into the air like skydiving and bungee jumping. One day, against my will, I was standing on the edge and looking out down to death. And they say, on three, and they say, one, two, and he pushes on on two. And that got me thinking, is why? Why they say one, two, and pushes you on two? It's because people grab on three, right? <laughs> then I had to realize we are all afraid of something. Am I right? Anyway, then, my mind got blank, so I couldn't hear anything at the time, but only one thing playing in the background. The song seems so loud, and it was, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. But 
As a matter of fact, the word of that song literally didn't hit to my heart. For me, the lyric, I believe I can fly and touch the sky, seems to be very, very dangerous idea. Because when I heard that song, it reminds me of the moment where I'm standing and my toys were on the edge. You know why I'm talking about this? It's because the title of today's sermon is Courage. Although our situations are different, it is true that people are afraid of something. That's why it may not surprise that the command of do not be afraid appears in the Bible over 350 times. People are afraid no matter how great and strong they are. And we are all too. I discovered an interesting fact as I was looking through the result of a Christian survey this week. It was interesting enough to see that the sermon that Christian really wanted to hear most, as well as the sermon that pastor really wanted to give most, is exactly the same. What do you think it's about? Take a guess. 50%. It's about fear. There's probably no one who does not fear. Because mankind has naturally instincts of fear, we can say that it's one of our fundamental base emotions. Take a look at Job. Job, Job was a person who loved and believe in God so much more than anyone else. He was a Mr. Perfect guy in everything. However, even someone like him was not completely from, uh, free from fear. Let's take a look at his compassion. I was so afraid that something terrible would happen, and what I fear most has happened. Is what I fear has come up on me, what I dread has happened to me. Job chapter 3, verse 24 through 25. Even when his life was filled with peace and blessings, he confessed that a part of his heart dress. He dressed that something will happen to him. Even though he may be healthy right now, Maybe he might fail ill later. Everything is going well now, but maybe it might go wrong. Thus, fear is an emotion that doesn't just appear during the times of hardship, but it is natural to be fearing and fearful during times of peace as well. So as we lowly, we will probably never completely be free from this emotion of fear. Why is that? It's because fear eventually comes from the unknown and from what we have not yet experienced. For example, people are afraid of getting older because they have never experienced it before. What's the reason that people fear retirement? It's because they haven't experienced it yet. The same is said for the death. No one has experienced it yet. So if someone can solve the case of fear through today's message, it's going to be like having saved and solved a problem that hasn't been solved since eternity. Therefore, I think that we have a good reason why should we be talking about courage today. It's because courage is the best and most realistic way to overcome fear. The fact that we are living with a lot of fear itself tells us that we lack courage. Therefore, it is not a matter of fear itself. It is a matter of where or not we can overcome. That's the case 
What is courage? It's choosing the path to overcome fear. In this sense, it is fair to say that courage is widely esteemed the first of human qualities. Winston Church. Courage doesn't necessarily mean that there is no fear at all. All people have some sort of fear, but the ability to trans oneself for noble causes is courage. The more I meditate on those who were used by God, I have been noticing a prompting character, which is was courage. This is a work of art by Rodin called The Burgers of Calais. The background of this sculpture is as follows. After hopes of conquering France, Britain invaded France. However, things didn't go as expected. And even after a whole year, the British forces, the British forces were struggled to conquer the small inner town of Calais in France. As the British forces were starting to lose their military and food supplies, they made a request to negotiate with the British Empire. However, the King of England at the time was unwilling to surrender after all the time and lives that had been lost until that point. He eventually surrendered when six leading citizens of Gaulle offered to die after and if the king spared the rest of the town's people. In later generations, the French decided to develop and build a sculpture that could symbolize their courage to honor the brave civic spirit of the people of Gaulle by hiring Rodin, the best ever artist during the time. It took Rodin 10 years to finish the sculpture. But when he tried to delight a driver and when he tried to deliver the finished work to the town of Kale, the people asked in confusion. Is what you ask for what is something that commemorates the courageous spirits of the city of heroes, but Why are you showing people who look weak and cry? Loden answered them, What makes these people great is not the fact that they were not afraid of death, but even though they were so afraid of death like us, they are willing to volunteer for their country. True courage does not mean you lack fear but that you don't know, but you don't lose hold of such courage. There is no one person in this world who is fearless. The only difference is that they have courage. Depending on attitude that you have in front of fear, you become either a courageous person or a coward. Having courage towards God is the power to conquer fear. David tells us about the power to overtake fear in today's passage. In short, he said to overcome all fear with the fear of our God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The author of Psalms is confessing that if we really know God, there is nothing that we can fear. Who is God? He is the creation of the earth. He is the almighty king and savior of our lives. So David is saying that because of the greatness of God, he can be courageous in everything else. That's why amid the storm in the Sea of Galilee, the Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. What does it mean? When we are covered in fear, 
It means that our worries are ahead of us. According to a research study conducted at Harvard University, they found that most worries people have are unnecessary. It's because 50% of things that people worry about never occur. 30% of things that have already occurred in the past. And the real thing to worry about only consists of 4% of their thoughts. The way we can overcome fear in this world is not to fear other things, but to have courage because we are in awe of our God. So real courage is acknowledging our volunteerabilities and seeking God's help and guidance. There is one church that decided to install, install a secret camera after several deep occurrences. The pastor, who was like a father to everyone, recast the camera instead in his office as well. All the believers knew the pastor's characters and spirituality, so they all told him that there is no need to install a camera. However, the pastor told them that he wanted the camera installed because he himself was an imperfect human who was vulnerable to temptations and sins. He said he wanted to live fearing the Lord until the day he retired as a pastor. They couldn't help but respect the pastor's courage and awe of God. It is right. God is the only one that we should truly fear. It's when we have that kind of fear, we can truly rely on him. And with his guidance and help, we can have the courage to overcome those fears. I know, back to the story, skydiving, I know and that is when we are about to fail out the airplane or bungee jumping. It will be so scary moment. But in one second, we realize that is the moment, the beautiful and blessed experience of our life. You are flying. It doesn't feel like failing. You start to failing, and there's zero fear. You realize at the point of a maximum dangerous is a point of minimum fear. Everything up to the step out, there's actually no reason to be scared. And God placed the best thing in our life on the other side of terror. David truly confessed that on the other side of your maximum fear, all the best thing in our life. I hope that the fruit of courage that is greater than any word will be upon you today. Amen. Now let us sing together. Please stand if you are able as we sing together our final hymn.
Let us pray, Lord, as David confessed today, we want to worship and rely on the you more than all our fears. Would you guide us, give us courage without our fears, Lord. Help us to overcome all fear with your courage. Allow us to live courageous lives, making the right decisions. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.